Today is Wednesday, January 17th. We'll explain why the outcome of a Supreme Court case involving fishing companies could actually be far more wide-reaching. And what happened that caused ABC News to cancel the next GOP debate? Also, we'll tell you about the New Deal to provide aid to people in Gaza, both Palestinian civilians and Israeli hostages. Plus, a multi-billion dollar airline merger might not happen after all. Why John Deere and SpaceX are teaming up. And which hit show broke a record not worth celebrating. Those stories and even more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing what's being called one of the most consequential cases to come before justices in years. Fishing companies are challenging a rule that says they have to pay federal observers who are required on their boats to prevent overfishing. But that's not really why this case is getting so much attention. More broadly, the companies have asked the court to overturn a 40-year-old precedent that basically says when laws aren't crystal clear, federal agencies should be allowed to fill in the details. So, of course, it's a precedent that comes up a lot when the federal government is accused of overstepping its authority. In fact, the American Bar Association says it's been referred to tens of thousands of times, making it one of the most cited precedents in history. And the Biden administration has said if the Supreme Court does overturn it, it would cause a, quote, convulsive shock to the legal system. This is all being watched very closely. Tons of business groups, high-profile conservative think tanks, Republican members of Congress and attorneys general from 27 states are siding with the fishing companies, saying the federal government wields too much power to approve regulations with little or no input from Congress. But the federal government has support, too, from environmental groups, Democratic members of Congress, attorneys general from 21 states, and organizations that advocate for public health, consumers, and civil rights. They've said overturning the precedent could cause a flood of lawsuits challenging the government's ability to do some of its most important work, like protecting the environment and making sure food and medicines are safe, health care is affordable, and workers are treated fairly. A decision in this case is expected by early summer. The top tax writers in Congress have reached a rare bipartisan compromise. Republicans and Democrats unveiled their multi-billion dollar deal. It includes $33 billion to increase the child tax credit for low-income families and another $33 billion to reinstate a set of popular business tax breaks that have expired. This plan would keep both of those alive through 2025. It would also increase a tax credit to encourage low-income housing development, tax relief for disaster victims, and more. To pay for it, the plan would rein in a tax credit meant to encourage employers to keep workers on the payroll. Its biggest Democratic backer was selling it as a way that 15 million children could be better off because of the plan. And its biggest Republican supporter highlighted what he says are pro-American policies that support more than 21 million jobs. They want to get it passed soon to impact the 2023 tax returns that Americans will start filing at the end of this month. But the package does face some uncertain odds in Congress since some lawmakers on both sides of the aisle say it doesn't go far enough one way or another. And for now, the number one priority in Congress is getting a spending bill passed before parts of the government have to shut down. So, to be continued. America's goal of containing violence in the Middle East seems to be getting more challenging by the day. For starters, there's the back-and-forth attacks between U.S. forces and Houthi militants in Yemen. Just yesterday, the U.S. launched its third attack in just this past week, This time, the Pentagon says it targeted four sites where Houthis were planning to launch missiles at more commercial ships. But almost immediately, militants did launch a missile that struck a ship anyway, though no one was hurt and the ship was able to continue on its journey. And now several news outlets have cited sources who say the Biden administration plans to put the Houthis back on the list of global terror organizations. Separately, Iran launched airstrikes on what it said were militant targets in Pakistan yesterday after launching similar attacks in Iraq and Syria earlier this week. And Israeli forces are still exchanging fire with Hezbollah militants in Lebanon. Now keep in mind, all of this is happening even though the U.S. and its allies have positioned extra military assets in the Middle East, hoping to deter armed groups from trying to take advantage of the turmoil in the area. So for now, that mission is still on. More humanitarian aid is going into Gaza today, meant to help Palestinians and also Israeli hostages. Qatar and France brokered the agreement with Israel and Hamas this week, a deal they say they've been working on since October. It will give three months' worth of medicine to 45 hostages with chronic illnesses. 
Plus, it will give medicines, vitamins, and more basic supplies to civilians in Gaza who are living in conditions the U.N. considers intolerable. All the aid is set to go through Egypt today. Meanwhile, an American diplomat is in the Middle East to discuss the possibility of a deal to release more hostages. More than 100 are thought to still be in Hamas captivity. But the U.S. apparently sees the latest aid deal as a good sign that further talks could be successful. So stay tuned. All right, we have much more news for you still coming up about another shakeup in the presidential race, a major merger that's facing a new setback, a popular show that became a record-breaking loser, and more. But first, let's take a quick break for our sponsor. Taking care of your health is not always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for almost a year now, I've been drinking AG1 every day. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized and focused. I noticed I need more nutrient support to keep up with my toddler or when I have a long work day. And AG1 covers my basis with high quality ingredients like pre and probiotics, adaptogens, antioxidants, and whole food sourced ingredients. I know if I drink it daily, I'm going to feel that extra boost. It's really just 60 seconds every morning, and I know I'm giving my body what it needs and setting myself up for sustainable habits. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I partnered with them for so long at this point. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. Okay, now back to the news. Once again, the presidential race is getting a little smaller. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson announced he's suspending his campaign. That wasn't a huge surprise since he finished sixth in Iowa's caucuses, was averaging roughly 1% in the polls, and actually hasn't qualified for a GOP debate since the first one. Speaking of which, ABC News canceled the GOP debate it had scheduled for tomorrow because former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley backed out. Haley said at this point, the only people she wants to debate are former President Trump and President Biden. Remember, Trump has said the debates don't benefit him, so he's been out since the start. And President Biden will only debate the eventual GOP nominee once primary season is over. So Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said he was looking forward to debating two empty podiums tomorrow. Well, ABC ended up saying no thank you. And now DeSantis and the rest of the White House contenders will be continuing with regular campaign stops instead. A major multi-billion dollar airline merger may have to be scrapped. This week, a federal judge sided with the U.S. Justice Department and decided to block JetBlue's merger with Spirit Airlines. Remember, the DOJ sued last year, saying the deal would drive up prices by taking a discount carrier out of the market, since JetBlue planned to convert Spirit's planes to the JetBlue layout and do away with Spirit's no-frills model. A judge presided over a trial last year where he heard from both sides, and yesterday he issued a ruling that said, quote, to those dedicated customers of Spirit, this one's for you. But this ruling does raise questions about Spirit's future, since the carrier has been struggling to turn a profit lately. It's a big setback for JetBlue, too. Its CEO has said the Spirit Airlines takeover would actually boost competition, since it would make JetBlue bigger and better able to go up against American, United, Delta, and Southwest. For now, JetBlue says it's reviewing the court's decision and might still decide to appeal. It seems one of Uber's recent acquisitions did not go exactly as planned. Back in 2021, Uber bought an alcohol delivery service called Drizzly for $1.1 billion. And this week, it decided to shut Drizzly down. Uber executives say they're just going to focus on Uber Eats, since people can get alcohol through that app too, along with takeout food and groceries. Meanwhile, Drizzly is shutting down slowly. It will still take orders through the end of March, and it plans to offer some Uber Eats perks over the next couple of months, likely in hopes of getting their customers on board with the switch. The biggest name in farming equipment has reached a new deal with SpaceX. But no, this doesn't mean tractors will be flying to space. John Deere is planning to outfit some of its tractors, seed planters, crop sprayers, and other equipment with SpaceX's high-speed satellite internet. And that could be a game changer, since the Wall Street Journal reports about 30% of acres farmed in the U.S. don't have sufficient internet connectivity. And elsewhere, the wireless deficit is even bigger. So a lot of farmers can't fully embrace new agriculture technology. For example, John Deere has tech that can gather precise data on crops and soil. Plus, there's software that allows herbicide sprayers to distinguish crops from weeds. Farmers can also monitor equipment remotely in their fields, troubleshoot problems without going to a repair shop, and more. And now those options could be much more widely available. Though it's still not clear how much the service will actually cost farmers. 
Deere said Starlink service will debut in the U.S. and Brazil later this year, and more countries will follow. So we already told you about the big winners at the Emmys. Think Succession and The Bear. But now a lot of the talk is about the snubs, including what Variety is calling the most snubbed series of all time. Better Call Saul just ended its sixth season run with zero Emmy wins, even though it's been nominated, get this, 53 times. That means it holds the record for the most Emmy losses. But don't feel too bad for the Saul team. The cast and crew have received plenty of other awards. Like last year, it won Best Drama Series and Best Actor in a Drama Series at both the Critics' Choice Awards and the Golden Globes. And Saul has plenty of company from other big-name shows that came up empty-handed at the Emmys. For example, Ted Lasso, The Last of Us, and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. They all went home without any trophies Monday night, even though they've won big Emmy prizes in the past. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, this podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. We all know life gets busy, but I do think it's important to treat ourselves every now and then. Just the other day, I got away to get a haircut and my nails done and get a nice coffee, and it really just felt so lovely. But here's the thing. Having a great doctor should not just be a luxury that you only get here and there. I think it's a necessity for every appointment and every condition. This is our health, after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors from tens of thousands of top-tier choices, all with verified patient reviews. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. Every time I need to find a new type of doctor, I'll search ZocDoc for who is nearby, takes my insurance, and has great reviews. Go to ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash newsworthy. ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. The number of office buildings that are now sitting empty just hit a record high. Moody's Analytics found in the last few months of 2023, close to one-fifth of office space in major U.S. cities was not leased topping previous records for office vacancies set back in 1986 and 1991. Of course, the popularity of remote work since the pandemic has played a part in this. Experts say the change is happening fairly slowly and predictably, so the impact on the overall economy has been less than it could have been. An economist with Moody's told Axios, we're moving toward a new era for the office. Similar to how online shopping changed in-person shopping, office spaces may just look different. No more central business districts. Instead, think mixed-use setups with offices, retail, and entertainment all together. By the way, reports say it wasn't just the pandemic that led to these office vacancies. A construction boom in the early 90s also led to what some call overbuilding, especially in the South. And sure enough, half of the cities with the highest vacancies last year were in the South. Houston, Dallas, Austin, Tampa, and Jacksonville. All right, thank you so much for joining us as part of your daily routine and for telling other people about the Newsworthy if you get value out of it. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 